she's saying to me, she's crying, she's saying, don't let them take me away, I don't want to go anywhere, don't let them take me away. And I knew then that was wrong. I knew it was wrong and there was nothing I could do about it. I felt powerless, totally powerless. What makes a death cafe a death cafe is, is just people and death. Death brings us together and it is, it's bringing us together in a very normal place. Tea and cake, you know, that is normal in our culture. Cafes, you go and you meet your friend there. And the one thing you don't talk about is death. Um, and I wanted to connect with people on a deeper, deeper level, and this seemed like a really good way of doing it. A hundred years ago, children died, uh, people got diseases, people had accidents, people went to wars. It feels like we've been lulled into a sense that uh, we're immortal and we'll live forever and we never have to think about that. And in fact, there's almost a, a belief, a sense that it's bad luck or it's somehow morbid to talk about it. it it's something that we uh, people generally have started to really shy away from so death uh, goes beyond uh, really race or gender identity it connects all of us and it's a wonderful place for uh, for humanity to meet without any of these boundaries it's what connects us. If you've got eight or ten people in a circle uh, and somebody shares something from their heart and everybody gets it, it's a, it's a real sharing and connection, a human connection. Yeah, it is. It is around um, our common life and mortality, yeah. Me and a group of other end-of-life doulas um, set up a deaf cafe about two years ago in Brighton and I support people at the end of their lives um, or families who have a member who have a terminal diagnosis. It's, we don't really do a difficult job, it's just doctors obviously are so busy and nurses are busy but what we have is like we have time to sit with the family and just to build a relationship with that person and give them the time is really all they need. They need someone to listen to them, someone to hear their fears and their worries and, and share their wishes with the family. So we just help navigate that. Death Cafe is not therapy, it's not bereavement counselling. I, If that's what people are looking for and that's what they need, then they need to go to bereavement counselling, go to cruise. I mean, there, there's a lot of bereavement counselling around. It's not that. It's about opening a conversation about your humanity for me. Nobody feels comfortable really about sharing that personally about how they're feeling or what's going on. Making people feel comfortable, safe and just holding that space, that's the skill of running a deaf cafe and the beauty of it is anybody can do it. I've seen goths there, I've seen uh, young people, students, all sorts of people. I think it really attracts people that are curious about life. It's shared humanity, so I would recommend anybody to go to a death cafe.